Hello again from Salem, Massachusetts. Um, I am here today to talk about this on this uh, new uh, technique I'm trying to learn um, from this book, Layered Cloth. Uh, I have talked about another book in this series, The Textile Artist, um, in a different video. Um, but today's video is about this um, book. I'm just adjusting the camera a little bit. <clears throat> where she layers up a bunch of different cloths and then cuts away to make various patterns. Um, and, the, and the book uh, kind of goes through a variety of ways this can be used. Um, it's it's uh, pretty cool. I'm um, not gonna find my favorite piece because I'm looking for it. Here it is. Well, maybe not my favorite, but it's way up there. <laughs> um, but I'm not gonna do this. I can't do this yet. <laughs> I've never done this before. So I'm just starting back here at the beginning um, with just, you know, the primary tutorial, which I'm apparently not gonna be able to get on the camera. I don't, yeah, there. I wish I could have it closer, but anyway. Um, she layers up a bunch of cloths. She then sews with her machine diagonally across the cloth. And then she cuts between the sewn parts. And then the last bit of the process is to wash the fabric, rub and twist it, um, and kind of tousle it. And she calls this making the fabric bloom. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try. Uh, last weekend I did a bunch of, I went to Michael's and got one of those tie-dye kits. I've never done that before. And I dyed up a bunch of different fabrics, um, just like some cotton, uh, and like this lovely, what Jude Hill calls harem cloth. I love this stuff so much, um, which you can get at Dharma Trading Post. Um, and you can get lots of dyes at Dharma Trading Post. And they have tons of stuff that are, that's just white so that you can dye it. Um... And this actually was from a different dye session. I think that's turmeric, actually. Um, and I've done ve like vegetable dyeing before, like with um, with turmeric, obviously, and um, with um, what do you call that stuff? Cabbage and um, avocado. But I've never done. I wanted some bright colors, um, so this is some just plain white sari ribbon that I got also at Dharma. Um, and I've had forever and finally dyed it up last weekend. So I have lots of stuff to work with. Um, and that's what I'm going to use for this project. I just uh, took uh, a bunch of those pieces of fabric and layered them up. And um, so she used her sewing machine, but because I am part of the Roxy, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Challenge that's happening right now on YouTube, um, I'm all about the, the, um, hand sewing. So I took this opportunity to just practice my back stitch. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, so that's how I've been doing it. Um, probably in the future, if I do this a lot, I would probably go to the machine. Um, but it's just really nice to just sit here on a cold February afternoon. We just had a big snowstorm yesterday. Um, and to just do some some slow stitching. I've done a lot of crafty things. I've probably spent about 10 years in mixed media. I love, love, love the jelly plate. I love making books and journals. Um, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. And maybe about a year, maybe two years ago, uh, I started working in some, some stitching. Um, and started to get more into stitching and more and more into it. Made a couple of altar cloths and uh, some little talisman pouches that I'm working on now. Taken some online classes. Um, Julie Booth is a fantastic teacher um, and has some wonderful little classes um, that you can just dip into. Um, and she really kind of stoked the fires of my interest in sewing, which I think, you know, my, my Grammy taught me, um, whatever, like 40 years ago, uh, and my mom. Um, but, you know, Julie helped me go from just sort of sewing a little bit to, 
to uh, getting more into the decorative elements of stitching. Um, obviously, the slow stitch movement has been a big thing for, I don't know, what, like 10 years now, maybe? I'm not sure that it's been that long. Um, but then, I don't know. So, you know, so I was getting into more embroidery um, over the past year, and then uh, this this Roxy's Journal of Stitching Challenge um, just really kind of took it to the next level to, for me and um, really inspired me to to do a lot more. I mean, it's pretty much all I do now. <laughs> um, my poor, my poor neglected um, jelly plate. Well, that knot was completely inefficient. <laughs> um, one, one thing is, it's a really, um, it's, I don't know, it's just very kinesthetic. It really helps me quiet my mind. Um, and it can be very meditative. Now, I mean, you know, yesterday I watched Gone with the Wind while stitching. So it's not that I, I'm not going to pretend I don't also like, you know, watch some TV at night or watch YouTube um, while I'm doing it. But also to just turn everything off and to just do, which is, you know, what is behind the slow stitch movement, right? It, it, it is a meditative practice. It is, you know, if, if you happen to, uh, if this is meaningful to you, it can be a prayer practice, right? If, if that's a, a part of your life. Um, and I love that aspect as well. And um, yeah, there's a lot to, February is a very contemplative month, uh, particularly in my particular spiritual tradition, um, which I've talked about before. And you know, this is a moment in time where there's a lot to be reflecting on, you know? So it's um, February 26th, 2022, in case anybody watches this video in the future, which I, um, would be amazing. Uh, and what's happening today is that Russia is invading the Ukraine. Um, and this is, uh, it's devastating. It's devastating. It's devastating to watch the loss of life. It's devastating to see democracy threatened. It's devastating, yeah, on many levels. And, um, you know, one of the things that I personally am also reflecting on is uh, so I am, you know, a white woman whose ancestors came to this continent, um, several hundred years ago. And when I watch the Ukraine and what's happening in the Ukraine, I can't help but reflect on the fact that this is something that my ancestors also did. Um, Right. This is what my ancestors did to Native Americans who were already living here and already had their ways and their societies and their cultures and their freedom. Um, and my ancestors took all of that from them. And, you know, the same with the um, people from Africa that they brought over to enslave. Um, and that is hard. I mean, it's it's obviously much harder to be in the Ukraine and living this reality than for me, who's reflecting on it. Um, but it's a quite uncomfortable place to reflect that um, my ancestors, who are wonderful and admirable in so many ways, and um, I admire so many things about them, and also, you know, there's some stuff that's pretty yucky, uh, and and that that is uh, passed down to me as as an ancestral heritage, uh, and I need to grapple with it. Um, so, uh, those are some of the reflections that are happening as I slow stitch. What I like about this st stitching as a practice, as a physical practice, as a spiritual practice, uh, as a meditative practice. Um, is that I can hold both, it, it makes space, the cloth makes the space 
for me to hold all the things, right? Um, it, it, would, it would be easy to just, uh, you know, excoriate uh, my ancestors as terrible people. And I'm not, and, and that is painful, right? Um, but the cloth allows me space to, to just hold all the things, uh, the things I admire about them, um, the, you know, so I'm not a Christian. Uh, if you've watched previous, <laughs> previous video of mine, um, you know, I'm not a Christian. Um, but I admire the, the sensibility of Christian charity, right? So, and, and to, how can I be informed by that? What can I do for Ukraine right now? Uh, there are places where I can give money. Um, I can, um, and then, you know, their sense of, of, of liberty and fighting tyranny, right? So, so how can I embody that? I can call my, um, call or write to my senators and let them know, you know, like, I don't want another Afghanistan. I don't want to go into a country and still be there in 20 years. However, I think that we could, the sanctions could be a lot, uh, more punitive, a lot faster, right? I, I think we're kind of baby stepping into it. And I think that we could be doing a lot more, a lot quicker. Um, because I don't think that Putin is going to stop because we have some sanctions. We need to be serious and aggressive about that. So, so those are things that I can learn from, from my ancestors, some gifts, some wisdom gifts that they've given me. And in this cloth, in this process of stitching, I can also hold um, and be truthful with myself about the realities that they were colonial settlers, <laughs> that they were, um, you know, spreading the empire and taking from other people and doing really terrible and horrible things to other people for their own gain. And I can learn from that too, right? I can learn from that too. So, yeah, so that's something I like about stitching. It allows me that space to hold all those things and um, to reflect on all those things and how I can move forward and how I can think about how can I be a good ancestor, right? I want to be a good ancestor um, that is a support to my descendants. So, so anyway, I'm going to finish this little process up um, and then before I do the cutting I am going to come in with some color um, or something maybe not that color I'm not sure some colors and maybe actually I'm gonna want to bring in some of these colors that are underneath actually bring in some pink and some yellow um, so I could have done this on my machine, but I just wanted the act of slow stitching and I wanted the practice of, you know, getting getting good at keeping a straight line with my backstitch. Um, but I don't want just, just want this backstitch on here. So I'm going to come in over these lines and do some embroidery and maybe do some of the stitches that I've learned in, in um, the, the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, and then I, I think of this as a sampler, right? I'm learning how to do this. So I didn't use good precious fabrics. Um, and I'm going to, because, it, because this is not going to be great. I know that. It's my first time doing it. That's totally fine. I'm just jumping in here and seeing what happens. Uh, so I'm thinking of this as a sampler. And so then what I'll do is I have this cloth. Um, this cloth diary, I mean, sorry, this uh, stitch diary. Um, this idea, I did not make up this idea. This idea came from, I think it's Claire Wesley Smith, uh, I think is her name. I think I've got all the parts there, Claire Wesley Smith. She wrote, I'm pretty sure she wrote that book, 
that came out, you know, whatever, whatever it was 10 years ago or maybe less, called Slow Stitching from Batsford. Um, and kind of reinvigorated this whole concept of, of slow stitching. And so uh, she just has this massive piece of, of uh, linen that she does some stitching on every day. Now she does the kind of the classic slow stitching, which is just that cantha stitch uh, or running stitch. I'm not sure if I have it anywhere here. Yeah, like just this running stitch or cantha stitch. Um, and that's mostly what she does. Maybe she makes some French knots, maybe one or two other stitches, but um, that's kind of the classic definition of slow stitching. This is embroidery. Um, and this is, I, I just took that idea of a stitch diary from her and um, began to practice all these stitches that Rachel and Sarah taught to us. So, you know, a buttonhole stitch and herringbone and seed stitch and um, French knots tight and then deconstructed and the fly stitch and you know all, all the things turkey work um, and then I have some books on embroidery so I started practicing other stitches I like this one a lot um, I think this is called Algerian eye I think is what this one is called um, anyway and at some point, when I wanted to do something um, on my February block and I didn't really know how to do it, this thing I wanted to do on the background, I came in here and um, did some practice uh, and figured out how to do it. So I th I've got this nice big spot here, and I'm whenever this is done, I will applique it on um, and have it be part of my stitch diary. And then if it works out and I figure out something I like, I will bring it into my March block for Roxy's Journal of Stitches. So give it a shot. Uh, the basic process is very simple, right? You have your fabric, whether it's square or circle or whatever. You stitch straight lines. Then you cut between the lines. And then that last piece in the process where you wash it and you um, scrub it and scrunch it to make the fabric, fabric bloom, as she says. So yeah, give it a try. Good luck. I'd love to see, uh, you know, if you, if you end up doing this, um, put a link in the comments so that I can come see your video uh, and see how, the, how it came out or link to your Instagram or your Facebook. All right. Thanks. Bye.